We're going to hike the root burn. We're ready. Let's do this. Trail day one. Mm -hmm. The root burn is one of New Zealand's great walks. It is hopefully supposed to be a three day, two night, uh, 32 kilometer trail. Um, as luck would have it, unfortunately, there was bad weather this week and one end of the trail is completely landslided out. We will see our luck. We'll see what we can do. George is here with us. Mm. He's probably going to get company. really dirty during this time, but mm. this is going to be the root burn. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. This is the start of the root burn. Hey. We are hopefully going past all of these things. Mm. And then some. Ah. Partial closure. Hopefully won't apply to us. This closure is in place for 27th and 28th, or until good assessment. Mm. 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 Are you ready? Mm. Are you ready? I'm ready. Five minutes later. I don't want baby to get angry at me about every photo op. You can't complain when like I uh, mm, I entertain baby so much with all the photo ops already. Okay, fine. Then at some point I'm still gonna take photos. I want you to take photos. I just don't want you to be critical of me for not getting exactly the way that you want it to be. I just think timing is important right now. <laughs> and that's why I don't like it's like your sense of timing is like why does that have to be the only way that it has to be done? Okay then, because we then couldn't get that photo. Here, and there are sand flies. Mm. I already got bit, it's really itchy. That's okay. This is the Rootburn Flats campsite, and it is supposed to be one of the most beautiful campsites in the world, and I can see why. stretch up from that valley. We are now at Rupert Falls Hut, which is where we're staying for the night. We've got several hours of daytime to go. Just gonna relax. We'll show you the views over, but then we're gonna see the valley we were at before. And here fancy. it is. I know, right? This is so much fancier than Rupert Flats. Look at that wood paneling on the outside. I wonder if one of the buildings is more as a private place. Yeah. This is a very cool reveal. I like how it's just... It just comes out nowhere. Yeah. It's like Rivendell. It's that city in the woods. Okay. Hmm. Two, two sets left. Three 
two two, two sets. Or sets. Okay, let's take it. Do you want to see first, or you want to just take? It? Okay, I'll stay here. You look. Right here's the view where we're staying. Yeah, it's alright, I guess. <laughs> okay, there's our dormitories. And here's our bunk room. And that's Kevin's bunk. And that's my bunk. All right, so we're going off on a short hike. Just talked to Ranger, uh, Ranger John, who recommended a little trip up to a place uh, a little secret lookout point that's not really marked. So we're gonna go check that out. See you later. Can we really see the view? Mm. Mm. Let's do it. Where is it? Mm. We made it. It's definitely longer than we expected. It is quite a stunning view though. It's like straight down view into to the valley we were in this morning. And that is Rupert Flats at the bottom. Maybe it wasn't worth it? Mm, I guess, but it was much longer than he had sounded like. Mm, agreed. Alright, sunrise. Morning of day two. Day two? Day yes. two. This is what we woke up to, that beautiful view, um, which is fantastic. Um, a little bit updates on our... Ooh, it is bright. So bright. Some updates on um, the track closure. Um, so basically, we're able to hike basically to the entire end of the route, except for the last few miles where the landslide has crashed through a bridge, a critical bridge junction. Um, so instead, we're walking an additional few miles. Mm. Um, to bypass that. So we're going to do the root burn plus. Yes. <laughs> All right. But the good, the good news is we'll still be able to make it to the end. Yes. Uh, we had a really great warden here at the hut who was able to coordinate us uh, rearranging our rides uh, so that we can still yeah, get home from the John other side. John was fantastic. Yeah. So we had a great stay and all right, it's going to be a long day, probably about six or seven hours of hiking. And, and mostly uphill. Take a no, look at no this. Trees. It's just going to be it's uphill. uphill. I'm just going to the like all the way to the tippy top. Okay. All the way to the tippy I'm top. I'm gonna start. All right. Bye. All right, here we are. Harris Lake. One of the most beautiful lakes I've ever seen. Mm. It's tucked away in the middle of the mountain. Yeah. Yay, we made it to Harris Saddle Hut. I'm gonna do the. Oh, this in itself is like really photogenic. Yeah. Here it is, Conical Hill. So we're gonna climb. Should I be excited? I'm so excited. I think you go up.
Breezy up here. Please let us take a photo for you. No, it's all right. This is good. Are you sure? This is the best five dollars I ever spent. <laughs> that, yeah. Look at this. Oh, it looks great. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> where, where did you sit to get that shot? Just um down on the floor. But now we're back on the main track. That was a side trip. And it's to Mackenzie Hut, which is where we're going to stay tonight. You can see from the sign, it's three to four hours. I will say though that there's a guy over there cooking ramen and I'm telling Brian to give him the Osmo pocket, which is what we're filming with, so I can have a bite of ramen. So if you don't see this footage, it's because I had me eating ramen. Also, there's clouds. And there's clouds. Yay. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but the clouds start building on the mountain in the afternoon, not in the morning. It's kind of... But yeah, I think what's I cool about it... I catch a, a cloud hike shot by leaving as one of the first few who left. But apparently you need to leave later to catch the afternoon clouds. <laughs> And off we go to Mackenzie Hut. It's true. Even since we sat down for lunch, you can see there's noticeably more. From below is actually kind of prettier than from above. I think it's because of that. Oh, I'm tired. Mm, very tired too. End of day two. We made it, like mm. Mackenzie Hut. Yes, and the views are right, I guess. We started at the very top of that ridge, hiked all the way across here to the right. Uh, zigzagged our way down to the bottom and then hiked all the way back across to the other side of the lake again to end up here. And tomorrow we have um, a little bit less than today's length, I guess. I hope so. Mm. And then we get to enjoy our beautiful hotel in Queenstown. Yeah, we got a nice one as a treat. Mm. And Kevin needs it. Yeah. Uh. My feet hurt. <laughs> oh, today was a long day. Long day. Beautiful view. I'm ready for like lobster and steak. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Good morning. It's before sunrise. Day three, final day three. You probably can't really see us except for this, or my headlamp. Mm. Um, but uh, you turn off your headlamp. Then. Okay, let's see. It does nope. not. It does not. It's still too dark. Oh, but see our faces. Anyway, uh, yeah. But anyway, um, because the last stretch is now extended several miles um, in rough terrain um, and wet terrain, we're going to have to leave early. My knees are killing me. But we're ready to go, and I'm ready to go home at this point. Yes, excited for that nice bed we have waiting for us in Queenstown. Yes. All right, and let's see if we can get one last view of Lake Mackenzie. Okay, That's... you can start seeing the light come through. Yeah. Yeah. There's some sunrise at the mountaintops. <clears throat> and uh, this morning, we were also fortunate enough to see some Kia birds. Yes, which, which is are... alpine parrots. Mm. Uh, pirates. Parrots. Parrots, yes. We have not seen any alpine pirates yet. Okay, see you guys on the trail. Flat walking area, it's the best. Yes, it's definitely more inclined than we anticipated. This early in the morning. Oh. 
Now that we're above the tree line, less bugs too. Here we are, made it all the way to Erland Falls. And there's Kevin. Hi, it's Kevin. Hey, it's Brian. You may be wondering why we suddenly had to scratch our video and then you're brought to present day time where we are currently sitting in our home. And the reason is because what you just saw was the clip of the waterfall. It's actually New Zealand's longest waterfall. Tallest. Tallest waterfall. Okay. Um, and then actually after about five more miles after that point is at the end of the trailhead. So you, we were going to show you kind of us crossing the finish line. Instead though, Brian here, somebody decided to film that waterfall in slow motion to try to get some beautiful B-roll for you guys to see. That being said, what you didn't know, what he did not know was that once you go to slow motion, you need to manually take yourself out of slow motion to back to regular filming or else all your footage is going to be in slow motion. So please, Brian, tell them what we filmed that we're not showing you guys. <clears throat> Um, so what we do have is a lot of footage of very beautiful, stunning, slow motion waterfalls. Kevin talking to the camera without sound. Yay! But like, we made it! But like without even the sound. All right. Yeah. Just like that. Um, Which is neither attractive nor interesting, so we are not, we're going to spare you that and not show you that footage. So unfortunately we can't take you across the finish line, but know that we did make it, as evidence here, um, and we did survive the end of that trail. Do you want to tell them what we actually had to go through? Yeah, so basically after we left the waterfall, um, there was one more little hut, and um, I can't remember what was the name. Uh, uh, Howden Hut. Howden Hut. Howden Hut. Yes, Howden Hut is the um, it's the last hut <coughs> if you're hiking the trail from that direction. But it is also the junction point between the main trail and a side trail. Um, I think it was called the Pass Creek Trail or something. Mm. So if you take Pass Creek, it takes you um, down this like pretty steep, really really muddy and boggy um, little section um, that puts you out on a side road. Um, so it doesn't put you on the main road uh, where the shuttle picks you up. It puts you on a side road where you then have to walk another mile or two along just a paved road um, to get to the uh, the shuttle stop. It was slippery as as heck, like, yeah. and it was like tree trunks that were wet, so much mud, and you ended up slipping and falling through those two three miles. Um, so we were covered in mud at the very end. But that also meant that we were about to finish the trail, so yeah. um, it was all fine. So you just keep telling yourself there's a hot shower at the end of this. I'm gonna be sleeping in a nice comfy bed tonight. Yes. I'm just but gonna just our gotta butts tumble, were just gotta tumble. so full of mud. Yeah. Like it was just it looked like diarrhea everywhere. Mm, but no. it wasn't. I promise you it wasn't. Um, <laughs> maybe anyway, a little, maybe a little bit of it. I mean the, we don't know. We don't know. The title of this video was How to Survive the Rupert Track. Really how to survive one of the most beautiful hikes in this world. So we came up with four um, uh, things that we learned about this trail, so hopefully you can do it too someday. Um, so tip number one uh, is the huts. The huts. Definitely recommend you should stay in the huts because um, it's not often that on uh, hiking trails that you can have uh, the option to stay in these really well-maintained uh, warden uh, hosted huts. And it's a great opportunity to meet your fellow hikers. It's a great opportunity to meet uh, the wardens who like know everything about the area and can share their knowledge with you. They, they do these like nightly talks where they talk about um, the areas, or the geography and the biology around their huts, which are really awesome. Um, and you also see a lot of the same hikers throughout the day because people, you know, everyone sort of like starts around the same time each day. And so you'll often pass by uh, the same people over and over again as you stop for lunch and whatnot uh, throughout the day. So it's a good chance to uh, chill out, put your feet up, get to know them. 
Also, uh, it means that you don't have to carry your tents with you um, because they're all like sort of dorm style bunk beds, uh, as you saw earlier in our video. And so all you need is a sleeping bag. You don't even need a sleeping pad because they have mattresses there. Um, it just makes uh, traveling a lot more lightweight. You don't have to carry even a stove because they have uh, stoves and gas provided for you there as well for cooking. Um, just be mindful that you have to pack your trash in and out. So try not to bring anything too heavy in terms of trash. And we mentioned this because you have the option of actually backpack, backpacking truly. You could camp with a tent if you brought your own tent and it's actually cheaper. It's way cheaper to just book a campground site as opposed to a hut position. Um, but obviously there's all these other added benefits um, that we would recommend the huts and it's, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Tip number two, and that is regarding the sand flies. So sand flies are um, pesky little creatures. They're particularly dominant in the South Island of New Zealand, which is where the Rootburn track is. And particularly near the Rootburn Flats, that's where you saw me kind of all covered up in my black jacket earlier in the video. And that's also when Brian got bit. And he can tell you more about that. But sand flies are gnarly, gnarly, gnarly. Yeah. So um, they're kind of like, you can think of them as like a cross between mosquitoes and flies, basically. Um, they sort of buzz around like flies, but their bite is, like it hurts um, when they bite you, unlike a mosquito. Uh, and it does itch um, both, like, like it happens almost instantaneously. Um, but they also have some weird quirks about them that make them somewhat easy to manage. Uh, they're really bad at landing on you if you're moving around and I was so skeptical when someone told me this But totally true if you're walking around even at a slow speed for some reason they won't land on you um, People also said that wearing bright colors is supposed to deter them. I'm not sure if that's entirely if that was really true um, But definitely recommend bringing uh, like a lightweight jacket That's you know long sleeve as well as having full-length pants um, even if you're hiking during the summer uh, to just keep the the bugs off because you will you'll be so grateful that you did um, There's also a bug spray in New Zealand uh, like bug repellent for sand flies definitely recommend you pick some of that up uh, when, you're, uh, when you're on the ground tip number three and that's the Department of Conservation so um, the Department of Conservation is basically New Zealand's equivalent of probably our like National Park Service. So they basically are government funded and they man and maintain these beautiful, beautiful trails. And they also are the ones that I believe fund the like warden huts um, that uh, kind of help guide you. And they've all just been so, so helpful. The Department of Conservation, both on their website as well as on the ground with the, via their wardens, are able to give you kind of up-to-date information on the trailhead and kind of like really troubleshoot for you if you run into any issues. So definitely look into the Department of Conservation. That's also the website where you can book your huts. You have to book these huts months and months in advance because these are such popular trails. So make sure you remember to do so. We booked our huts probably two months in advance and that was already kind of risking it because um, we were going at the beginning of summer time. Mm -hmm. So we it was April. still was April. April, yeah. So we were just entering the kind of high peak of their season, but right beforehand. So that's how we actually probably got our tickets because if we waited a little bit longer, it probably would not have been available. But use the Department of Conservation to your advantage. They are wonderful, wonderful people. Tip number four is our final tip. And that's really just to enjoy yourself. I, I think we really, really love backpacking trips. We really love appreciating kind of the world's beauty and what it has to offer us. And um, the Rootburn Track is definitely on the top of one of the most beautiful hikes we've ever done. Um, that being said, it also wasn't one of the most challenging ones. We did have actually an 80 year old man backpack with us. And like, not like a friend, I don't, I'm not friends with 80 year olds, but he was backpacking with his son and uh, his grown ass son, like our age, um, and they were doing it. So if an 80 year old man can do it, you can do it too. And the beautiful views that you just saw in our video, you can make and see for yourself with your own eyes, even if you are 80. So please do. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching our video. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them down below. <laughs> And please like, subscribe, do all the 
uh, things that YouTubers tell you at the very end of their video, like ding, 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 like do all those, please. Um, we are obviously a new group um, and we, many of our friends and family really told us and asked us to kind of share our trips with them and we thought that this would be a fun way to do so. We never really thought about capturing our information on video so this is kind of a new medium for us so please apologize. Uh, I do apologize if things are a little bit rough uh, but we will be posting pretty frequently about all our adventures that we have shared together. Um, and hopefully a lot of outdoorsy stuff for you guys to see and when we travel um, So please subscribe, please like, please comment um, all of those things and um, We'll see you next time and hopefully we'll have you come along with us. Yeah, thanks okay.